Hello, I'm Jay, and I'm here to talk about wiring at a Ford 1932-53 to 12-volt negative ground system. And so these were the flathead. All right, so we're going to start with um, kind of the components here. So we'll start over here with the alternator. So we have an alternator here, and so we'll say this is a 10SI, standard Delco 10SI alternator. It's got three connection points. It's got an output on the back. It's got a plug that goes in the top of it with two little pins, okay? And sometimes they're up underneath a little dust cover, so you have to pull that dust cover off. There's two little pins. Okay, the battery, there's a diode in the system, there's a fuse in the system, your dash key switch, a push button, the solenoid, a coil, and a distributor. And that's essentially all there is in, in almost every one of these 32 to 53 um, electrical systems plus all the other lighting that type of thing but this is this is the the charging in the start system okay so we're going to start here with the um uh, and we're going to put um we're going to take a wire a, a 10 gauge wire preferably from a fuse and you want to make sure you always fuse this uh from the fuse over to the battery okay so the alternator goes directly to the battery the alternator will not work unless it has a direct connection to the battery and make sure you always fuse it so we'll say this is a hundred amp a hundred amp alternator we want to have this fuse as 125 amps so you want it you want it 25 percent larger than the output that gives you plenty of headroom all right so now on the on the alternator, we're going to now hook up the uh, the plug. Here's an example of one. So this plug just simply plugs in the back of the alternator. It's got a sense <clears throat> a sense wire here that senses the output of the alternator, and then it has a long white wire with a diode in it. Okay, a diode, which is a one-way electrical check valve, and that's going to allow power to only go into the alternator not the other way around. So this, this device here excites and keeps that alternator charging. Because <clears throat> one of the problems with, with older engines, newer engines you get by with a one wire. Older engines it's tough because <clears throat> the pulleys and the, were never meant to have an alternator on them. So, uh, and the generators turn much slower. So uh, you're relying, if you don't run a, a three wire or a two wire, some people call it two, some people call it three, it's all the same thing. You're relying on the magnetism that's inside the alternator to keep it excited. So we always recommend just running that extra plug and that extra wire. And that way it ensures that that alternator is gonna excite all the time because it takes power to run an alternator. Unlike a generator, generator doesn't take any power at all. It, it will charge a dead battery. An alternator needs power. It will not charge a dead battery. Okay. So you got the plug. You're going to plug that in. And there's a red wire that's going to come along. And you're going to hook it up here. Again, this is the sense. So this is going to sense the output of the, the voltage. Okay. Then, then, then you've got that white wire that's going to come up into the diode. All right. And then from the diode, we're going to go ahead and just wire this down because it's it's the simplest if you just wire it over to the plus side of the coil. Now, now we need to get this coil some power, right? This is not powering the coil. Some people think that because you got it hooked up here, this coil is magically powered. No, it it's going to receive the power when you turn the key switch on. All right. And the reason for this diode is if you don't put a diode in, in here, this little electrical check valve, um, what can happen is you can turn your key switch off and the alternator will keep the coil hot and the engine will keep running. So if you put this electrical ch check valve in here, it only allows the, the voltage to run one way. So the voltage in this case is, is going to go into the alternator from the power from the coil. Okay, so now the key switch, it's, it's gonna get its power from your, your 12 volt electrical system. So we'll just tap in here, make it simple. So when you turn the key switch on, when you close that key switch, you're gonna get power over here 
that power is going to come down here and it's going to connect to that coil. Now, keep in mind, coils are polarity sensitive, meaning that a plus side of the coil needs to go to the plus side of the battery. Okay? Negative side needs to go over to the distributor. All right? Very simple connection. Be careful because when you're converting a car from positive to negative ground, the coils are actually wired the other way. And sometimes people just put the coil back in there and wire backwards. Well, they are polarity sensitive. They got a plus and mild, minus on there and you won't get the right amount of spark if you don't wire it this way, okay? So minus goes over here to the distributor. The distributor is grounded through the chassis of the engine, okay? And then of course there's a, there's a you know, the high voltage wire is coming out here and it's going over the distributor. So that's your high, that's your high voltage. So as that distributor cam chain turns, whether you have a Protronics unit or you have uh, points in there, it opens and closes the points. It activates the coil and we won't get too deep into the coil, but it'll activate the coil and creates the spark. Okay. So now we have our coil wired up, we got our alternator wired up. Um, we need to ground our battery, very important. Okay, make sure you got good grounds. We need to make sure that your alternator is really well grounded because if you don't have a ground on your alternator, it's not gonna ground back to the, to the negative side of the battery. There is another post on the back of these and if you ever wanna run another wire, a ground wire over to, to a ground or a good chassis ground, you should do that. Um, because a lot of problems with alternators and a lot of problems in electrical system period in these old cars has to do with grounds. Okay, so we got the alternator grounded, we got the distributor grounded, we got the battery grounded. So now we're going to come over here and on Fords, interesting enough, they used a ground activated push button, meaning that that push button, when you pushed it, it didn't send current out, it actually just grounded it into the dashboard. So if you look at your button on your dash, it's just when you close it, when you make those contacts there, uh, it just goes, th this, this connection just simply goes to ground. All right, so that means you need a ground activated solenoid. Now, in the six volt world, there were ground activated solenoids because they made them. In the 12 volt world, after 1955, 56, they no longer made a ground activated solenoid. So we had to come up with a solenoid that would actually um, activate the starter through the same grounding button without having to change the button and, and rewire everything. So, so we came up with a solenoid here. And if you, if you look at our, our it's, it's a 7-10-13 solenoid. Okay, so it's, it's got a little red jumper wire over here. It jumps over here. And, and this is the battery connection, all right? So this, this is your battery bus coming down here. So that's your battery on, on that side of the solenoid. Okay, that's your hot. All right. And then on this side, you wanna just wire that right to the start button. So what this has is it has a coil in here that's connected to either side of this. It's not internally connected here at all. So all you're doing is just providing a ground from here to, to activate and pull down this little plunger in here that goes across the points. And then you get power down to your starter, okay? So it goes, from your, your 12 volts comes down here to this side, you push the button, close the contact, you got, you got, you got your 12 volts here to your starter, okay? Ford really did a good job making it simple. But let's, let's talk about a couple of other key pieces here. Um, okay, so alternators, when you test them, uh, before you start the engine, it should read battery voltage. And a fully charged battery is 12.6 volts, okay? 12.6 volts, not 12 volts. So a lot of times people, when you go down to the local store, you buy a battery and you think it's fully charged. Sometimes they are, but it's always good to put on a trickle charger overnight, charge it up to 12.6. So when you measure here with a, with a meter to ground, 
you should get 12.6 volts, okay? And start your motor, and this measurement now will go to 14.1 volts or 14.5 volts, plus or minus, okay? So that's the voltage this battery needs to keep it charged because if you only had the same amount of voltage coming out of here as the battery was, it would never charge it. So it has to be a couple volts more than the battery to actually charge that battery up. So make sure your battery is fully charged at 12.6. Test the back of that when it's running, and sometimes you have to bring the RPM up a little bit. So the alternator's, you know, putting out a, putting out a full current. You, you should be getting around 14.5 volts. Okay, I think that's... Uh, I think that's it. If you have any questions, you can um, you can go to www.vintageautogarage.com and uh, and let us know. Thank you very much for watching.